restaurants, bars, and I know we want to go back to those, but they need to look at opening and closing those to keep the schools safe, and then once the community gets under control, then slowly opening up those as well. Dr. John, I know it is encouraging that coronavirus cases, hospitalizations, deaths are all heading in the right direction. But Dr. Fauci is warning about another upcoming super spreader event. Enjoy the game, watch it on television, but do it with the immediate members of your family and the people in your household. As much fun as it is to get together in a big Super Bowl party, now is not the time to do that. Watch the game and enjoy it, but do it with your family or with people that are in your household. Oh. Dr. Dr. John, we're just coming out of our holiday surge. New variants are spreading across the country. Uh, what's your advice for football fans out there? And also, if you look at the pandemic over the last year, what you notice are the rise of cases, the surge of cases, after these people start to gather these events, Memorial Day, Labor Day, Fourth of July, Thanksgiving, December holidays, it all happened two weeks later, six weeks later, having these rise of cases, hospitalizations, and deaths. And the concern is that people are getting together for the Super Bowl, which is a very traditional thing here, that that could repeat, that pattern could happen again. And so it's also the big advice is not to get together with anybody physically, do it all virtually. virtually. And if you do get together with people, which we know some people are going to do that, that. At, the at the same time, the CDC is saying, saying there are ways you can minimize the risk. There are ways you can make it safe, but there are ways you can minimize the risk. And that includes the eliminating the number of people there. Show up early, leave early, so you minimize the risk. Show up early, leave early, so you minimize the number of people there. And then they talk about a couple of things. You know, especially if you're in a pandemic, you're going to have to be careful. 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 You're Obviously, Obviously, again, against those things, do not go virtually, but if you do go, go, take these steps to minimize your risk. What's the deal? Dr. John, I would never survive at a stadium uh, during a pandemic. Uh, I am both loud. You can't get me to sit down. I would have to go to the concession. I would need to go to the bathroom. I should I should not be allowed into any of these stadiums till I'm fully vaccinated. We're just going to do the, the beer and, and the nachos and all that at home. Much better idea for us. And I agree with you. Same thing. It's hard not to do those things, so just stay home. Stay home and celebrate that way. Watch the game. Yeah, you can, you can scream all you want from the couch. Dr. John, thank you so much. You bet. Okay. Cortana. Missouri is switching up its COVID vaccine distribution strategy, giving select hospitals the majority of its doses. Those hospitals are able to vaccinate 5,000. Hello. What's up? To find, to find out, out try, try saying, saying show my calendar. calendar. The vaccinations per capita, just 7% uh -huh. of its population, uh -huh. population has gotten, gotten shot, according, according to the Department of Health. Uh, uh, what, what has it been doing wrong? Cortana? What day is it? Those ranking today is Wednesday, Wednesday February, February 3rd, 3rd, 2021. 2021 don't necessarily paint the full picture, right? So you've got this data system. What time is it? It's 3.37 p.m. in Arch Cape. Thank you. Systems are old technology. They're slow. And sometimes they lag about two weeks behind. So that's problem number one. We also have this confusing guidance and debate around first doses versus second doses. So there's been some debate about whether states should just be giving out all those first doses as much as possible, hoping, crossing their fingers that enough will be produced for second doses. Here in Missouri, they are very diligent about reserving those second doses. So that might be part. Uh, uh, the, Hello. Uh, the data and the numbers that you're seeing. Where are you? But there certainly are challenges. Missouri is the, the lowest when it comes to states. Why are you stuck? I honestly can't tell if that's a trick question. Okay, so it's a trick question. Uh, which meant that, uh, especially uh, earlier on, 
You like the music? They were horrified when an angry pro-Trump mob stormed the Capitol on January 6th, but election workers say they weren't exactly surprised. That's because Donald Trump supporters targeted them first as they count ballots across the country. As NBCNews.com local reporter Jane Tim writes, those poll workers are still coping with weeks of abuse and threats. Jane joins me now. Jane, Jane, NBC News interviewed over a dozen election officials who say they were threatened, verbally abused. Tell us more about what they experienced. 
You know, what was really remarkable is that I heard the same thing from officials from all over the country. Uh, I talked to the Secretary of State in Arizona, Katie Hobbs, and I think we have that down. Let's play it. People, you know, you know have posted things, things threat, threat, you know, we're going to burn, burn down, down her, her house and kill her family, family and, and teach these, these cheaters a lesson, lesson, stuff like that. Like that. I, mean, I mean, that, that is, is to, to some degree, well, it's did we get it or is it just a waste of time? Today, you sign up. I don't know. How am I? To put yourself out there for some of these attacks. Nobody signed up. It doesn't say. 